In this video, we're going to learn about some of the important periodic trends in the uh, periodic table here. Let's first discuss about the atomic radius. Atomic radius is the distance from the center of the nucleus up to the valence shell. For example, if you have an atom and here it has an electron in the, you know, the valence electron is present in the fourth shell. So the radius of an atom is the distance from the center of the nucleus up to the valence shell. Higher radius means the size is bigger. So what happens to the atomic radius when you move along the period and down the group? Let's take an example of the first group. Hydrogen with atomic number one, it has electron in the one in the first shell. And you know sodium, it has the valence electron present in the third shell. So as you go down the group, the number of shells increase. So that means the distance will increase. Distance from the center of the nucleus up to the valence shell is going to increase down the group. Means that the size will increase, right? So the atomic size, atomic radius will increase when you go from top to bottom in, in any group. The first group, second group, third group or any of the group. Even the noble gases, the group number 18 also, right? So here all these, and you know, in all these groups what we find, we find that if you go down the group, the atomic size is going to increase. Why it will increase? Because the number of shells increase, right? The number of shells increase, so the atomic size will increase. But what about the atomic size along the period? If you go along the period, let's take an example of a lithium here, right? This is our lithium here. And let's take, you know, the next element is beryllium. Beryllium also has, you know, the, the same number of electrons, you know, same number of shells. Two electrons in the first shell, two electrons in the second shell. So number of shells here are same. You can expect the size, you know, should remain same because the number of shells are same in the lithium and the beryllium. Lithium has two and the beryllium also two. You can expect the size to be same, but size decreases. Why the size decreases along the period? Because the nuclear charge here increases, right? In the nucleus, there is a three positive charge. Here you find four positive charge. Number of shells remain same but the nucleus charge increases that's why you know this attraction will be more and the size will decrease right so you can say as you go along the period as you move across the period period so the number of shells remain same but proton number increases right nuclear charge or you can see the proton number right nuclear charge or the proton number increases so that's why this atomic size is going to decrease. The second periodic property, the periodic trend here is the ionization energy. What is ionization? Ionization means to remove an electron from an atom in its gas state. If you have an atom in the gas state and you're going to release or remove the electron from this atom to change it into the cation, right? The energy that you need here to remove the valence electron from an atom is called as an ionization energy, right? So ionization energy is the energy that you require here to remove the valence electron from an atom. And again, this ionization energy tells us about how strongly the valence electron is held by the nucleus, right? So high ionization energy means the electron is very strongly attracted by the nucleus and it's very difficult to remove it. That's why you need a very lot of energy to remove it. And very low ionization energy means that electron is not attracted strongly by the nucleus. And what happens to this ionization energy when you remove a valence electron from an atom? As you go down the group, we just learned that down the group, size will increase. So when the size increases, a number of shells increase, electron is away from the nucleus, so it becomes very easy to remove it because attraction will decrease. So as you go down the group, ionization energy that will decrease because the size increases, attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron that decreases. And as you go across the period from left to right, what happens there? The ionization energy will increase, right? Why? Because we learn that when you move across a period from left to right, Suppose from lithium to beryllium and beryllium to boron to carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. So the size is going to de you know, decrease here. Size decreases 
and the attraction will increase. Hence, it is difficult to remove the electron. As you move across the period, attraction will increase, size decreases. Therefore, what happens? Ionization energy also increases, right? Ionization energy increases. So that means in this whole periodic table, the element with the highest ionization energy must be helium. Right? Because as you move along the period, it should increase. And as you go down the group, it should decrease. So that means for any period, suppose you know the second period, the element with the highest ionization energy is the neon. The third period here, element with the highest ionization energy is argon. Right? But among these elements here, yeah, as you go down the group, ionization energy decreases. So that means the highest energy ionization energy will be for the helium. Next property is electronegativity. What is electronegativity? Electronegativity is the strength with which the atom is attracted to the valence electrons in a chemical bond. We know when a chemical bond is formed between two atoms by the shedding of an electron. And when a chemical bond is formed, when a covalent bond is formed between the two atoms here, the electron pair cannot be necessarily at the right at the center, in the middle between the two nuclei. Rather, it is attracted by one of the atoms more strongly than the other. And this tendency of the attraction of this electron pair by one atom with respect to another is called as an electronegativity. If you have a more electronegative element, that means it's going to pull the electrons more strongly than the other one, right? Suppose we have a hydrochloric acid and in the HCl, what we find, we find that chlorine is more electronegative. So that means this electron pair is very closer, little bit closer to the chlorine than the hydrogen, right? And we have a scale of uh, 0 to 4 and on this, you know, scale, we call it the polling scale. On this polling scale, we measure the electronegativity of the different elements in the periodic table. Four being the greatest electronegativity element and the element with the highest electronegativity is fluorine. Right? Fluorine has the highest electronegativity. Now, this electronegativity, as you move across the period, it will increase. Right? It will increase. So, electronegativity along the period it is going to increase only up to the halogens you know, up to the group number 17, because the noble gases have a zero electronegativity, right? Because, you know, they have a, a stable valence electronic configuration. They don't need electrons. They are not going to form any kind of a bond. And as you move across, as you go down the group here, electronegativity, it will decrease. Why it will decrease? Because the size will increase. Size increases, so attraction will obviously be less. As you move along the period, the size decreases, attraction is more, so that means electronegativity will be more. So that means the group with the highest electronegativity is the halogen family, right? Fluorine, chlorine, chlorine bromine, iodine, and acetine. And again, a general trend is if you move down the group, what should happen? Electronegativity should decrease. Yeah, as usual, we find that, you know, the electronegativity again decreases. That means even among the halogens, the element with the highest electronegativity is fluorine. And then it should be chlorine, then bromine, and then iodine. Fluorine with the highest elect electronegativity of 4.0. And noble gases have an electronegativity of 0. Rest of the elements have electronegativity between 0 to 4. More than 0, less than 4. The second most electronegative element is not chlorine, ra rather it is a oxygen with a 3.5 electronegativity. And then it is the nitrogen 3.0 and this chlorine also with the 3.0 electronegativity. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.